dear students assalamu alaikum in our last lecture we discussed the magnetic field produced by a single coil on the stator of a machine we have seen that a single coil accommodated in a single slot pair on the stator results in production of two poles on the stator the mmf in the air gap of the machine has a constant value under the north pole and under the south pole and the variation of mmf with respect to the space angle theta can be plotted as a square wave now since we have considered a round rotor machine the air gap is uniform and hence the reluctance offered by the air gap will also be constant and hence the magnetic flux density in the air gap will show a variation similar to the variation of mmf wave with respect to the space angle theta in the last class we also discussed how four poles can be created on the stator for producing four poles we need two coils which are accommodated in two slot pairs and similarly if we need to produce six poles on the stator we'll be requiring three coils at least three coils accommodated in three slot pairs in all these cases we use one slot pair per pole pair and such a winding which is accommodated in one slot pair per pole pair is known as concentrated winding now in a practical machine such a winding is seldom used we see that for producing a magnetic field of sufficient magnitude we require a large number of turns and all those turns may not be accommodated in a single slot pair per pole pair and therefore there is a physical necessity to accommodate the winding in multiple slot pairs per pole pair secondly with a single slot pair per pole pair whole of the periphery of the stator or whole of the surface of the stator is not being fully utilized and thirdly with one slot pair per pole pair the magnetic field in the air gap shows a square wave distribution which in general is not desirable for satisfactory operation of an ac machine the magnetic field distribution in the air gap should be ideally sinusoidal and therefore in practical machines instead of using one slot pair per pole pair we use multiple slots per pole pair and such a winding which is accommodated in multiple slots per pole pair is known as distributed winding to understand the magnetic field produced by a distributed winding let's consider that we have a winding which is accommodated in three slot pairs per pole pair therefore we'll show a winding accommodated in three slot pairs per pole pair
So we will be having three coils accommodated in three slot pairs. So the angle between two slots is known as the slot angle. And therefore, we have three coils accommodated in three slot pairs. One slot pair, one coil. Second coil will be accommodated in this slot pair. And the third coil will be accommodated in the third slot pair. And we number the, label the coils accordingly as A1, A1 prime, A2, A2 prime, and A3, A3 prime. The three coils are displaced from one another in space by the slot angle gamma. Now, let's try to plot the MMF variation uh, with respect to the space angle theta due to the currents flowing in the three coils. Suppose each coil has nc number of turns number of turns in each coil and let the current carried by the coils is IC IC is the current carried by each coil Now to plot the MMF distribution due to the current in the three coils, let's start with the coil A2, A2 prime. If we forget the coils A1, A1 prime and A3, A3 prime, the MMF distribution produced by coil A2, A2 prime will be similar to the case where we had considered one slot pair two per pole pair. In a two pole machine. So let's plot the MMF due to the coil A2, A2 prime with respect to the space angle theta. Pi by two. The MMF distribution due to A2 A2 prime will be a square wave pattern, which can be easily drawn. The value of the MMF on each side will be equal to NC IC by 2. Now having plotted the MMF uh, due to the currents in coil A to A to prime, the MMF due to the coil A1 A1 prime, if we forget the other coils, it will be similar in shape to this, but it will be displaced by a space angle gamma equal to the slot angle. And therefore, the MMF due to the coil A1, A1 prime will be lagging the MMF due to the coil A2, A2 prime by an angle gamma. This is here an angle equal to gamma. Similarly, the MMF due to the coil A3, A3 prime now, a coil A3, A3 prime is ahead uh, of coil A2, A2 prime. Therefore, the MMF will be uh, displaced 
by an angle gamma from that of the coil A2, A2 prime, it will be ahead. again by an angle gamma. Now, to get the value of MMF anywhere in the air gap, we have to add the three MMF waves. Because the MMFs are created by three coils individually, those have been plotted here, and the net MMF can be plotted by taking the algebraic sum of these MMFs at each point. And therefore, we see that from this point to this point, the three MMFs are additive and hence from this point to this point, the MMF, net MMF in the air gap will be three times NCIC by two. I'll extend it a bit. From this point to this point. the MMF will be 3 times NC IC by 2. Then between this point and this point, we see that one of the waves, it drops down and therefore the net MMF will be, you will have only here twice, it, you will have NC IC by 2 in this region. And then from this point to this point, the MMF will be negative, it will be minus NCIC by 2 and from this point to this point, you will, if you add up, these will have, again have 3 times, but on the negative side. So, if we add up the three MMFs, uh, the final MMF distribution I will draw in red will be like this. So we get a net MMF in the air gap which shows a stepped variation and we can easily see that this stepped wave is more close to a sinusoidal wave and if we neglect the space harmonics, the, we can plot the fundamental as The fundamental MMF wave can be plotted So this is the fundamental component of the MMF wave and it can be easily seen that the fundamental component is very close to the actual variation of MMF. So we see that by using a distributed winding, the MMF uh, variation in the air gap will be sinusoidal uh, with a uniform air gap machine we will see that the magnetic flux density will also be similar in shape. This field is maximum along the axis of the stator winding as you can see and the field goes on decreasing as we go towards this point. 
it can be shown seen on this diagram also along the axis the field is maximum and then it goes on decreasing sinusoidally and then uh, it reverses on the other half and then it reaches maximum on the other side and therefore uh, mathematically the field can be represented as the MMF can be represented as F max it has a maximum value which is along the axis and then it varies as a cosine function of the angle theta so here we'll take a break and in the next lecture we'll discuss the magnetic field produced by a single phase winding